hey guys, uh, we'll walk through two solutions. These are the ones from your homework last night. And then I have one more problem for you to try this evening that you can put into your notes and uh, bring that with you tomorrow. I would probably have your sheet out in front of you. That way you can update. Um, you can just throw your um, work from this video onto your worksheet. That way you have it all in one place. Um, the first problem we'll do is the problem one on the front that deals with just one person running a race. And remember, the, the goal here is you have an understanding of how to use multiple methods to get to a solution. Um, when you do that, you empower yourself with many, many options about how you choose to solve a problem. So I've done some setup on this. I think that's consistent with what we did in class. But again, just wanted you to have an opportunity to see it all worked out in complete um, form. So we'll start with the graphical part of this solution. I've set up my graph already to go up by 10, 20, 30 on the time axis and uh, up by 10 is this axis. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 um, will be up that vertical axis. I know that because of the information that's given in the problem. This problem says specifically that you can travel 50 meters in 20 seconds. So I'm thinking as I set this up, I need to make sure I give enough space on the, ex of the time axis to get to 20 in the same amount of time that I'm going to get to 50. So that works out um, beautifully on this one in a way that I'm going to be able to represent my graph fully. Um, but now we just plot the points. And you can see by my diagram solution that I've already done a little bit of thinking here to say at time zero, my runner starts at zero meters and after 20 seconds ends at 50 um, meters. And so I marked it halfway point just to have another piece of information on my chart here. But what I'll do is I'll now take these points that I've written in my diagram, incorporate those on the graph, just like this. So there's 0, 0, 20 seconds, and 50 puts us right there. Because I know this is a constant uh, speed problem, then I know that this is going to be a linear function. And so that's my line. And we can now use this to solve the problem. Also have the equation of motion down here of the form x equals v times t plus x naught, our initial position zero. The velocity here is the slope of this line, so that would be 50 as the rise divided by 20 as the run gives us the speed. That, if you break that down, goes to 2.5. So this equation of motion is x equals 2.5 times t. This allows you to solve the problem because the problem asks, assuming you can keep this up at a constant speed, how long would it take you to run 65 meters? And so. Two ways to do this. One is to come up on my graph to 65 approximately, follow that over, find that point on the line, and then come straight down to give a value that looks like it's a little bit bigger than 25. We'll see if the number comes out the same on the equation side. So we'll take this up here. So x equals 2.5 times t. I'd like to plug in for a certain position and find out what the time is. So 65 equals 2.5 t. We'll divide by 2.5 meters per second on both sides. Cancels on this side. And we get t is equal to 65 divided by 2.5 gives us 26. So my graphical solution was close. 26 seconds to run that distance. Okay, that's problem one. Let's look at problem two. Problem two, we're having now two, uh, two objects that are in a race. Uh, sorry, they're not in a race. They're actually going to meet each other. Um, and these two are definitely moving towards one another based on the way the problem is set up. Um, and they're definitely starting 23 meters away from each other. This is what we talked about today, but just to refresh that, if they're each traveling a distance to meet in the middle, the man goes 9 meters, the dog goes 14 meters, that means they're separated by a distance of 14 meters. And so that's this diagram and what it shows us. And so we see they're both going to move towards one another. Again, the diagram is really helpful in that it helps you figure out how to plot these points. This is where each of these start at time equals zero. And so if I go to my graph at this point, here's the man at time equals zero. 23 will be right there for the dog. 
gives us lots of good information about the initial starting position. We know that after eight seconds, they should both end up at nine meters. And notice, I'm not saying they traveled a distance of nine meters, I'm saying their final position is nine meters because they both travel their own speeds to get there. So eight seconds, nine, it's right about there. And then so again, you should use a straight edge for this, but I'm working on a board. It's a little more challenging. Um, we get this as the two lines that represent the motion. And so that's the point of intersection. Okay, so from those, we can get the two equations of motion. This is going to allow us to get a much more specific answer. I have x sub d, I'm labeling that as the position of the dog, will equal negative 14 divided by 8 is the speed. It's negative because this line has a negative slope. Times t plus 23 is the initial starting condition. And then here, um, the position of the man will be its speed, 9 over 8 times t. And those are our two equations. And so we could figure out a couple things here. Um, we already know when they intersect, so that's not really of interest. But the question um, asks the last part, if they continue past one another, how long would it take them to be separated by five meters? So to be separated by five meters means that wherever they end up later on, we want to know when does that distance between them equal 5 meters. So watch what we're going to do here. We have all the tools at our disposal. We just have to apply a little bit of, of reasoning to get to the solution. This line here, or this point rather, represents x sub m, final position of the man. This point down here represents x sub d, the final position of the dog. And so if I want to know what this position is, where they're 5 meters apart, what I'm really asking is, when subtracting these two points, when do I get 5 meters? And so watch what we do. We take my two equations. I'm going to first write x sub m minus x sub d. That's me saying the difference between these two points, or this space here. I want that to equal 5, so I'm going to come down here and say that should equal 5 meters. Well, what's on the other side? Well, xm minus xd is just taking this equation minus this equation. So let's do that. 9 divided by 8t minus a minus 14 over 8t plus 23. Feel free to pause there and check out what I just did. A little bit of algebra to get that together. And what I can do is do some simplification here. So 9 over 8t negative times a negative here will be a positive plus 14 over 8t plus 23. And let's simplify further. Um, these both have a single t in them, a common variable, so we can add them together directly. They share a common denominator. So that's just going to be 9 plus 14, which in this case will give us 23 over 8t plus 23. And then 5 stays on the other side. And now we're just solving for t. Um, this, again, is giving us the point where these two are 5 meters apart. So if we subtract, um, oh, and I made a mistake. Remember, we're, we're subtracting these two equations. And so this negative sign is actually subtract this entire section of equation. And so we have to di distribute that through. So we'll put a negative sign there and a negative sign there. How did I catch myself? I was thinking ahead to what the solution was going to come out to be. I was going to end up with a negative t, which doesn't make physical sense in this scenario. Negative t would be talking about the position before they both left where they started. All right, now we can solve this. So we're going to add 23 to the other side and get 28 equals 23 over 8t. We can multiply both sides by this reciprocal, and that'll give us, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, I can't edit that out. Eight over 23 times 28 equals t. And let's run that through a calculator. So I'm going to do 8 times 28 equals 244. I'm going to divide that by 23. Gives us 9.7. t equals 9.7 seconds. 
how does that make sense on our graph here? Um, this would be t, so I'd actually have to back this up a little bit to give us our position right there. But that's how we get to the solution of 9.7 seconds for this um, time it takes to get 5 meters apart. That's the solution in its complete form. I would definitely suggest spending a little bit of time thinking about how we got to that solution because um, I, th I would say everything up until this point is pretty straightforward. It's this step right here, creating that equation where it gets a little tricky. Okay, so for this evening, here's what I would like you to try. We're going to set you up with the diagram of the scenario and then let you figure out what the graph would look like and what the equations would look like. So here is the scenario. Imagine we have a number line and imagine at this point we have your car and your car is traveling with a speed of 10 meters per second. It is doing so in this direction. Let's call this the initial position zero meters. At the same time, twenty meters down the road, a truck with a speed of V equals five meters per second is also traveling this way. The question is twofold. One, when do they intersect? Question one. Question two is this: When we get to time uh, or distance, rather, down the road of thirty meters. Sorry, thirty meters for the car. So when the car is here at thirty meters, how far away? is the truck from the car. That's your question. So start with, you've got the diagram here. You don't need to worry about the diagram. You need to worry about a graph that makes sense that's going to help you solve it, the equations of motion, and then, of course, a numerical solution. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow.